black we're gonna do we're gonna do a class i'm calling it checking out your privilege and we're just gonna have a conversation and white we're gonna talk about white privilege we're gonna talk about privilege but mostly we're gonna talk about white privilege with these three lovely white people up here you're all white right you look white but all right can you introduce yourself really fast hi everyone my name is John. I'm a sophomore biomedical engineering student. Hi, I'm Liz. I'm a sophomore and I'm a marketing major. Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm a sophomore uh, in biology. He's okay. a medical engineering student and he's having this discussion. What, what is the use of that? He's in class, man. This is one of his classes. I guess it's an elective. Um, John, Liz, Nicole. So here's what's up. We, I'm going to get to the two of you in a half second, all right? Um, we're going to have this conversation that, you know, white privilege and white privilege and the privileges, you know, that word, we throw it around a lot. Or would you agree with me? We throw it around a lot. You hear it a lot. You, you all, like, heard it from day one, probably growing up. You, it's like, I don't know, probably as old as long as you can remember, right? Um, you start getting, you know, you start as people are white, you start getting the message that you're privileged in our culture. Because it's a thing that started probably like 20, 20 years ago, but probably 15 years ago is when it really just latched on. Yeah, I don't remember hearing white privilege when I was growing up in the 90s, in the 80s. I'd never heard that term. Did y'all? I don't know how old y'all are. I would say eight to 10 years ago is when it really took hold. I heard it like in the 2000s, like in 2005, maybe four. Yeah. Salute to Tonic T, man. He says $5 challenge time. He said it, not me, man. Take the $5 challenge. Don, okay. And yet we talk about this, but um, we talk about this, but yet we don't talk about it. It's almost just assumed, you know, this thing. White privilege. Those of you who are not from the U.S., I'm assuming you all, you all hear this also, right, bro? Where are you from? Korea. So you hear that white privilege thing? Are you familiar with it? You're not familiar with it? Hang on, dude. Really fast from Korea, man. Did you apply to TA, by the way? TA. Did you? I mean, did you apply to volunteer? Yeah, make sure you do that. Okay. What do you think it means, white privilege? Um, for me, I think, like, um, everything that Hold white the mic people close. does, everything that white, white people does is a right thing, or like, I'm not sure about it, how to say, they have a privilege on everything they does. White people have a privilege about yeah, they, everything. Yeah. Just for being white. Is that it? Is he right on that? I mean, is that the idea? All right. Yeah, okay, you got it, man. These white people got to sit in this class. And I can't, you can't tell me that all of them are down with the fucking woke shit, regardless of what they say publicly. It's got to be so fucking annoying being a white person that's just living your life, got regular problems, regular issues. You see a group of sun men, your fucking heart jumps out your fucking chest. Fucking white girls is fucking fucking sun men. They won't touch you and shit with a 10-foot pole. The fucking test, the sun man gets 350 points on it and shit. He untimed after an hour. The professor's coming over saying, uh, time's up on the test. The sun man, he 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 get the fucking untimed test. Um Every fucking place you go, some people are getting favoritism and shit. Cops kill more white people than black people with infinitely less interactions. Like literally, they it's a one percent of the interactions white people have of, as compared to what black people have, at least like one percent, and they get killed twice as much. And then you got to hear all this bullshit. Y'all, y'all think these all these white people like yeah you're, you're right I'm privileged I don't believe that man I don't believe that shit man the privilege I, is I will say I will say I've seen like a lot of this guy's videos 
and he brings stats to the equation and he challenges a lot of the narratives like he challenged the 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 no i got that the, i definitely the killer. got that yeah. the kids yeah. the kids i'm talking about these kids in this class it's there's a whole it's a big auditorium and all those fucking kids can't be in there like yeah i'm so much privileged than the sun man i got it so much better even though they say it now i'm not saying they're not they they know they have to say it but i'm talking about deep down inside man yeah. all right so uh here's the thing we're only we're not going to deconstruct the conversation too much okay so first off here here, you, you, the three of you show up in Social 119, you volunteer, you're like asking me before class, okay, what's the topic? The, the topic is white privilege, which is probably one of the most, probably a controversial topic I could ever ask, I could ever ask anyone to talk about. And the three of you are going to talk about your understanding of white privilege, okay? Which means that you, you, re, you really, and people watching the stream, this is also really important or watching the recording. There are so many landmines that they could step on. This is so highly politicized and highly contentious. There are so many landmines. Don't worry about any of that, okay? Because what we're asking you to do is have an, an, an is talk about what you have heard about white privilege, right? That we are not, we are not talking about your beliefs. You, we're not going to ask you like what what you think sir, is good or bad. Yeah, but some hateful Sun team can clip that shit and not put this part. Like, if you make a clip, this ain't this little preface he's giving is not going to be in it. If you make this an Instagram video or a TikTok video, you're just going to put the what the what the white kid's saying, and the white kid's going to fucking appear like a fucking racist, right? None of them are going to refute. They're all going to toe the line. We'll see. Salute to, salute to DVK. Ock Nation Hall of Famer, man. He says, like to dedicate this to newcomers and returning chatters. It's always a pleasure with you. And ah, salute to Brian Marcink. Says, my bet the cop is in on it. And Ock, of course. Mm, I think you're talking about the last story. Bad or right or wrong. It's none of that. It's just what you have heard about it. And this is not a comprehensive conversation. This round. Uh, my dad was born in Jamaica, and my mom is, she's from New York, but my grandparents are Ashkenazi Jew. Your mom's parents? Yeah. Okay. And, and you are Bengali, you said? Wait, hang on. Go ahead. I'm Indian, and then like the specific part of India is West Bengal. West Bengal. Yeah. Okay. So do you just say Bengali if you're talking to Indians? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, what I would like for the two, the reason the two of you are here is um, just you might have questions, and you can pull your chair back a little bit so you're kind of facing them a little more. It might be easier. But if the two of you have questions, I have a list of things that we're going to start with to frame the conversation. But if the two of you have questions as two brown people, um, throw the questions out, okay? I mean, you're mixed, right? So I call you brown, but you're very mixed. and you're. And I you're hate that term, brown people, like as if these two people have some kind of fucking um, something in common, as if you know what I'm saying? As if like they're like similar in any way, as if their communities like each other. Indian people can't stand black people. They hate true? them, they hate them, they hate them. How do you figure that? Well, their stores are robbed constantly by sun people, so yeah. But but is that a fact though that they Indians hate Patels hate some people. Yes. They tell their kids not to marry them. They tell their daughters not to date them. If an Indian girl brings home a black guy, she's going to get disowned. If her parents are from India or ben Bengali or anywhere in that subcontinent region, Sri Lanka. Now, if they're, her parents have been here for a while, they may, uh, if he's a ball player or 
you know what I'm saying, an uh, actor or something, that they, they, they're cool with it. If he's if she brings home a regular fucking son, man, she's disowned. Are you fucking kidding me? Hey, is it different than how FBA some people feel towards tigers? Oh, it's, the, it's, it's how Ombritos feel to a son, people. Right. How and how feel to some people. Stop trying to fucking make it like you don't know. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is that, look, here you go, Ignatian, we're disagreeing. What I'm saying is the some people don't like the Ombritos then. It's like some shit that everybody does, right? Not oh, just, no. I think, think some people love Ombritos. Some men love Ombritos, man. What are you talking look, about? Look, look. Uh, come on, man. That's not even fair. If if it moves, the sun man's gonna go for it. <laughs> if, no, if it has a pulse, he's going for it. No, sun man loves you can't lie with that. Uh, uh, if it moves, sun the sun man's love, after it. No, I got that. But sun man love Latinas, man. Are you fucking kidding me? Um, but here's the thing. I think it mostly deals with the woman. So black women prefer black men, but they'll 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 date a they'll date a umbrito. But yeah, they prefer black men. So yeah, it's probably similar, probably similar. But the reasons that a black family will tell their daughter not to bring home a, 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 a on burrito is different than the reasons an on burrito or a Patel will tell their daughter to not bring home a son man. It's different reasons. Yeah, but they're both so prejudiced reasons, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that's what I, what I'm saying. We'd like for the two. The no, I got you. I got you. Yes, we're we're prejudiced. We're racist as hell too. But what I'm saying is that, like, okay, so there you go. You prove my point. Calling these people colored people when they both fucking both parents would tell you, you know what I'm saying? Don't bring this motherfucker home. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> why, why why you uh, here? To be fair, I'll say because, um, Indians will say, uh, "You better dump the guy." Or you'll get disowned. They won't get disowned automatically. Nah, but why do you think they use the term brown people? Because they're trying this this liberal Democrat bullshit lumping these people into a group as a voting base. Right. And, you know what I'm saying? Of they're, they're better, it's better to, as a voting base if you can just say, hey, all y'all together and all y'all are um the same boat and vote for us and we'll fix everything for you. Yeah, well, I also think they try to expand. <laughs> They try to expand the victimhood class. They try to make a class of victims, and they try to expand it. So they add the brown to further go against the gliders <laughs> in a way. Of yeah, there's, there's an element of that too. Yeah. What I would like for the two, the reason the two of you are here, is um, just you might have questions, and you can pull your chair back a little bit so you're kind of facing them a little more. It might be easier. But if the two of you have questions, I have a list of things that we're going to start with to frame the conversation. But if the two of you have questions as two brown people, um, throw the questions up, okay? I mean, you're mixed, right? So I call you brown, but you're very mixed, and you're, and you're American, right? Okay, so um, I want to use you to kind of jump off of some things. So you have to, you you'll have to jump in when you're ready to jump in. Okay, so I again, this is one of these things. Like, ah, well, let's just see how it goes, and we'll be. So Max, Manali, John, Liz, Nicole, are we there? White privilege, got it. Um, okay, so when I say uh, we're going to talk about white privilege, what's your what's your first thought? Anybody, you can just call, grab the mics. Yeah, what's your first thought? Um, You're going to talk about white privilege in front of all these people. This here. is a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, kind of nervous. Um, as a like He's nervous, white person, like, right? I think that there is inherently privilege, just because a lot of like systems are formed by white people. So there's okay. a lot of like things. All right, hang on, back up a second. Mike, I didn't ask my question correctly. That's a, it's good. What's your first thought about being asked to talk about white privilege? Oh, my first thought is kind of like, like you said earlier about like the landmines. Like there's a lot of, um, I don't think it's really controversial because at least I, I don't think that, but um, I see why people do, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's just something that you have to be careful about because I don't know, I don't like to make people upset. So I don't want to offend anybody. And you don't want to offend yeah. anybody. Okay. So, um, but definitely is something that exists and that I know is there. Okay. Can you can you either of you say a little more add more onto that like what's what what would be the problem what's a landmine what's 
Well, first off, what was your what was your first thought when I said, "Oh, we're going to talk about white privilege"? I personally just don't talk about it. Uh huh. Because I don't like controversial topics. But that's ah. just me as like a person. Like I just avoid controversial <laughs> oh things. My God. A lot of women. Okay, so that's you're the per the, you're the perfect person, man. So not not only yo, someone's leaning up against the light. Yeah, hang on. Hey. Yeah, so don't lean up against the wall back there. Um, yeah. Hey, so you're the perfect person here because you get to talk about it in front of all these folks. Talk about, like, breaking the ice, you know? Liz, okay. <laughs> but but you're fine. Trust me. I Look, when you, I, I got your back. Can you um say something about a landmine maybe that you would imagine? Um, with, like, talking about? Uh -huh. Um. I would say just because I feel like with everyone from different backgrounds, obviously people interpret it a lot differently. Like if you're asking my parents or like um, even generations or like us versus different people, people of different backgrounds, there's just a lot of different um, like talk about it. So uh -huh. it's kind of hard to come to a consensus of like what is right or what like should be believed like or perceived by everyone okay yeah it's very it's it's a hot topic it's controversial right because lots of people have lots of different ideas um yeah do either of you have any thoughts about asking them would you want to be in their seats white people dude can, can you can you respond can you say more about that you wouldn't want to be in well, no, so the half of you who's white wouldn't want to be half of me that's white would not want to be on that side because because obviously like this is a, a tough question and like i mean i obviously don't know them personally but i'm sure they're not like this is a struggle racists session. you know like we don't all get to pick we don't get to pick what race we are um and so i guess on the topic of privilege i think one of the main issues in this country is that if you could pick i'm sure a lot of people would rather be white and live in america than be Hispanic or black or Latina or uh, Asian and things like that. Yeah. We, and you get to be both, dude. Would <laughs> you? What, what, would you pick being? <laughs> no, it's pretty cool, right? Do you, do you identify? Do you ever identify as white? I, I think, and this might sound like, like bad, but maybe situationally, I uh -huh. think there's some times where like, I was like, yeah, I'm definitely like, I'm black or whatever, but personally i've grew up in a like predominantly white area so i don't have like that many black friends or um know that many black people and my dad's black and my mom's white um that's really it though. yeah so you pull you play the white card sometimes yeah you live the white card sometimes and i live the white card probably the most black of card. the time yeah most of the time yeah and do you ever play the jewish card dude yeah yeah i played cool. the jewish card before yeah awesome man <laughs> I love it. Manali, do you, what do you think about, would you want to be over there? Um, I think just like talking about something in front of a bunch of people, no matter what it is, is difficult. So like I've, in that sense, no. But I think in terms of like talking about the topic, it is something important to be discussed on all sides, especially yeah. when you're talking about white privilege. So, okay. Yeah. Look at how fucking uncomfortable. They're not even white. And because they're not black, they got to assume, oh, shit. I'm not black, so when you're talking about white privilege, it's, white privilege is talking about black people. Press one. Talking about white privilege is talking about, is, is talking about black people in these kids' minds. So they fucking can't fucking compute. Because they know that they have. Yeah, it's, 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 you're talking about black people. Mm. White privilege has nothing to do with white people. It's everything about black people. Excuses and reasons why they ain't got shit and all this bullshit. Yo, so, that's um, true. Bro. That's fucking true, dude. I never thought about yeah. it. It's, it's, it's all it's, predicated so, on the assumption that sun men are poor. Exactly. Which, which they are. They're the poor rest of all the groups they're the poor rest of all the groups 
So yeah, if you want to say they're poor, like it's just be like if all of us, whoever, whichever one of us has the least income is the poorest, it's probably me. But I mean, <laughs> whichever one of us has the least income is the poorest, you know what I'm saying? So um, you know what I'm saying? Like that's just what it is. So Tomcat, man. Tomcat says, Man, I listen to you all the way from the car days. You earned this and more, my man. You got to mute yourself, yo. Bro, can y'all mute yourself, man, please? Thank you. Um, he says, man, I listened to you all the way from the car days. You've earned this and more, my man. I'm from Chicago. Need I say more? What up, Python? Tom Cat, man. Tom yo, Cat from the sky. Yo, actually, what you're saying is white privilege is really about some people. Yeah, that exactly. Sense. That makes Because these people wouldn't be freaking out. But this girl's from Bangladesh. And this guy's fucking half half Jamaican and half Ashkenazi Jew or some shit. Why the fuck would they be freaking out? Imagine what the white kids are going through when they're asked about this. Mm. Dude, awesome, man. Awesome. Okay, so you ready? So one of you. So who are the white people that have privilege? Because we're saying white privilege. So I'm looking out here. I'm seeing a whole bunch of white people. Actually, it's a lot of black and brown people in here in this particular class, but who are the white people that have privilege? I think every white person does just because of the color of their skin, like naturally just <laughs> those that have two parents, they're the ones that have privilege and that's not exclusive to whites. Not necessarily, but I hear you. Yeah. What if you, what if you, one of your parents is on fucking meth and the other one's fucking abusive. cashier at Kroger's man. Yeah, or what, what, if, what if they're both abusive? Or one on yeah. just just give them a suit and they'll be fine. Statistically, even if that, you still have a better chance than if you're got a single mother. It just comes with that. Mm -hmm. Um, and also go back like a little bit before. I think that it kind of is like a white privilege to not have to think about white privilege. Mm -hmm. Like it's something that I don't have to worry about having. Like if I'm going to be at a disadvantage because of the color of my skin, I don't have to think about that when many other people do. But again, it seems like white people are thinking about it all the time. Yeah, I, I guess it's like something that like I think about, but whenever I discuss it, I'm like, oh, I don't have experience on that. Like, See, he just lied. He said, I don't have to think about it. And then the guy said, well, think about it. It's like you're thinking about all these. Oh, yeah, I do think about it. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, you know you think about that shit all the time, so you don't have no privilege because you're constantly fucking – being neurotic about what some people are thinking, what they're going through, the ebbs and flows, the ups and downs of Sun America has got you fucking, you know, your panties in a bunch of shit and you fucking, now you, you some people rule your mind, man. We live in your mind. You know, oh. what's, what's up? They're afraid of that, that sun lady in the back with the mask on. She's going to come for them. They said the wrong thing. Yo, if she listen, she's more powerful than he is on that campus. If With she the mask, says something, you know she's crazy too. It holds way more weight than anything he would say. And anything blue hair. he would say holds more weight than anything this dork would say. Someone else okay. can worry about it. Okay, all, all right, right, I got the problem or worry, worry about it. So okay, but in reality, like everybody has to be part of. Okay. Um. um all right. Can can one of you re also? What do you, what do you think? When are is who are the people that have privilege? Um, I feel like like I have privilege just being here, like going to a university like this. Like uh -huh. I feel like so. I feel like it's thought of like the white people with privilege are like men who are like very wealthy, like big, like business whatever like, like um, power brokers yeah yeah and well that's definitely true i feel like it's so much more like just about like the opportunities that we get and like no matter like where you are in life like there's just a lot of different things that um it's easier for us i guess in a sense in some ways than um other types <laughs> other types and they don't know here's the thing they don't know personally. They know all this shit from TV. 
black people talking about we get pulled over and it's uh, and, and my heart beat because I never know if I'm gonna survive a traffic stop and bullshit like that. They don't know this personally. They don't know any of this stuff from personal experience with black people. The black people that they're around are fucking jolly ass black people running around the campus and shit, having the fucking time of their lives. Have you, um, okay, so hang on. I, I need to say something. And also I want to speak into the, into the, uh, into green here to people on the stream. Listen, you know, the thing I do in this class, if you haven't noticed, I don't take the middle ground. Old man. Oh, no, I got it. No, I know what you said. Sorry. Okay. You said that um, um, not not thinking about it. It's like, it's like you, and you said it too, kind of like, well, you, it's not a thing that you have to really think about. You just hear, right? Yeah. Okay. So listen, so I'm, so to be really clear with you all, right? Like I'm, I'm on the out, I'm going around on the outside. So I'm going to ask her a question now that probably white people don't get asked. And you, you and you, you, you want to just know that my point is always to just Go to the oppositional thing because we're gonna because we're gonna play here because I want to ask the questions that don't get asked. All right, but it sounds like white people are thinking about this all the time, and with a, with a tinge of guilt. You know, like like if you're if you're black or brown, if you're not white, you can think about it, and you and you have like there's almost like a a self right a righteous superiority or something like yeah we're going through this, but if you're white. It's like the way privilege is framed. It's like you're the source of the world's problems. Like there's a lot of guilt involved. So like I'm not really sure that's a privilege to not have to think about it because you're all thinking about it all the time every time you hear it. Could one of you, could, Nicole, could you respond to that? Dude, how'd I do on that? That's what you would say, right? Go ahead. Um, I feel like everyone in this room and like, like there's different levels of privilege. Like okay. what level, are, like I feel like everyone that has the ability to go to like a college or a university definitely has a different level of privilege that as of like compared to someone who just graduated high school and is not like can't afford to go to a college. Okay, based, but now go to white people. Yeah, but like not all white people go to a university because they can't financially afford it but white but john said that all white people have privilege just on the basis of being white doesn't really matter i asked who has who are the white people that have privilege and john's like oh everybody except you you don't have white privilege you're good <laughs> i feel like not all white people are like privileged with like the opportunities and like the lifestyles they live but on the basis of like um just like not, I guess not like always, but like there is always going to be like that foundation of like okay. just like looking at you, what you think and what you like perceive from a person. Okay. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to affect everything, you know? Okay. Okay. All but right. Got you. I think there's a difference too. I like that. You can have white privilege and class privilege. Okay. But you can have white privilege and not class privilege, like someone who's white but can't afford to go to the university. Okay, let's talk white privilege and not class privilege. Yeah. Let's just talk white privilege. What what are some how when is privilege in operation for white people? Let's let's start right there. When is it in operation for white people? If you guys have a question too. In operation. When is that. white privilege operating? When is it when are you when are you actually experiencing the white privilege that you're talking about that you have, that you're so sure you have? When are you actually, when does it come to play? Happening for white people. Yeah. Do, that's my question. But go ahead. When is it? I'm going to ask the white people. This is the kind of question I want you guys to ask. Um, I don't know. I was reading the other day. It was kind of a while ago. But it was like this, this, um, Dude said he was he was applying for jobs and he has a very not like a name that's not John or Jacob or um and he wasn't hearing back a lot. So then he changed his name on his Revolve, resume and he changed it to James and he heard back like 30% more. So just like without seeing a face to the name, just having a white name gave him like the privilege 
of getting those opportunities to work for those companies. And right. why is that? Is it because they've had previous that's, experience that's a common with argument Wanda's too. and said, oh my, uh, nothing happens? And the other point I had was, can we like have a couple of sentences like without having the word like in every phrase? And feel, and I feel like, I feel like. Saying to herself as a white person, Hey, I've never gotten pulled over before. So, man, that's an example of white privilege. It's like, no, hang on a minute. White people don't don't just bet. I drove yeah. too fast. Okay, go ahead. I feel like. Well, hang on, hang on. But this actually isn't really a joke here, right? So we're doing we're going to be doing some science here a little bit, right? So if she goes through the world saying to herself as a white person, Hey, I've never gotten pulled over before. So, man, that's an example of white privilege. It's like, no, hang on a minute. White people don't don't just bend, don't bend over too quickly. Like, don't just don't fall over. Like, you know what I mean? Hold, stand up straight. Sometimes, damn it. You know what I mean? Don't just buy into the narrative. Okay, go ahead. The fact that he has to say that. The fact that he has to say that shows that they don't have no privilege. The fact that he has to tell them, don't bend over, don't fold all the time, stand up straight, shows they have no privilege. Saying to herself, as a white person, that's hey, I've never gotten pulled over before, so man, that's an example of white privilege. It's like, no, hang on a minute. White people, don't, don't just, bend, don't bend over too quickly. Like, don't just, don't fall over. Like, you know what I mean? Hold, stand up straight sometimes, damn it. You know what I mean? Don't just buy into the narrative. Okay, go ahead. Um, so I feel like I wouldn't have to think twice about when I, if I were to get pulled over based off of the stories that I hear in the news about people of color getting pulled over compared to white people getting pulled over. Okay, stories you hear. You don't watch people. Nation. Black people. She's selling people of color. She's talking about black people. On the news, okay. Can I, do you have, either of you have a thought on that? The story she hears on the news about what happens to black and brown people when they get pulled over. Do you have a thought on that? I do. Right. Do you know how many black and brown people, when they get pulled over, how many of them actually have problems with the police? It's stories you hear on the news. News is news because it's rare, Right? Anything you read in the news, it becomes news, especially if it's on the front page. It's news because it rarely happens. Okay? Like this young man that's just got, is anybody more than me? Because I've been in the middle of this for 30 years. Yeah, it's just amazing watching that. Now, I want to show you all something, man. Um, hey, I, I've been pulled over, and I've been set, set, set on the side of the highway for 15 minutes while they searched because I allowed them to search. So, mm -hmm. yo, yo, I, I don't want to ask those. And they confiscated my uh, my knife because I didn't want my, my, my pocket knife because I didn't want to have a weapon around. I had to go. They didn't return it. So I had to go back and get it later. Well, so your academic smarts has been the way many of low income. Let, let me show you this, though, man. That Bengali girl, right? That's supposed to be, you know, so disadvantaged. They're letting a lot of Bengalis into the country. Well, proving your academic smarts has been the way many low-income children have gained access to New York's top eight selective high schools. But recently, the headlines have focused on the sharp decline in the number of Black and Latino students making it through the entrance tests. A number of social and systematic systemic factors are at play. Uh, but at the same time, the number of students from relatively newer immigrant communities, particularly Bangladeshis, have been rising every year. The BBC's Brajesh Upadhyay travelled to Jackson Heights, New York, to find out why. On a Saturday morning, this Bangladeshi neighbourhood is buzzing with shoppers, but equally busy are the classrooms at a nearby tutoring farm filled with students doing extra work at the weekend to try... Tutoring farm filled with extra students doing extra work on the weekend. Exactly. Hey, uh, I got a quick point. Uh, you know, America likes to complain about the Jew screw and how it's ruined us through immigration, but 
they they've really betrayed the the United Kingdom because they've been absolutely saturated. This is Jackson Heights, Queens. I mean, just like they Britain created Israel, they basically gave it to them. So this is what they get in return. Yeah. This is right here a tutoring farm. Mm-hmm. A tutoring farm. Think about that. Salute to Deluxe 247, aka Cal Ripken, aka the real MVP coming through once again. Think about this. These people mm-hmm. are supposed to be fucking um disadvantaged. They're supposed to be have you know downcast and have a terrible lot in life because they're brown and being brown is supposed to somehow hold them back and look at what they're doing in America on a Saturday morning this Bangladeshi neighborhood is buzzing with shoppers but equally busy are the classrooms at a nearby tutoring firm filled with students doing extra work at the weekend to try to get into New York's best publicly funded schools Khan's tutorial is a go-to destination for children from mostly low-income Bangladeshi families. The firm, started by a Bangladeshi teacher 25 years ago with three students, now attracts more than 3,000 students a week. Right now, we are... This year, more than 350 of its students made it to those elite schools, and the majority of them are Bangladeshi immigrants. We are filling in the gaps that the school system oftentimes misses, uh, particularly in minority neighborhoods, low-income neighborhoods, new immigrant neighborhoods. And They're uh, filling in the gaps. The community. The community is saying <laughs> if the school isn't the good as good as the white school and the rich white, because we don't only talk about the rich white school, if the school isn't just as good as the rich white school, we'll fill the gap in. In other words, they're basically homeschooling their kids with tutors. Collectively, though. It's different to homeschool your kid at your house, but for the community to come together and rent a building or buy a building where all the fucking kids come on the weekend. Is one of those DNA things, like? Thank you. Thank you. This is fucking DNA. You can't teach this. You couldn't take a race of people and make them do this because they they just wouldn't be able to. It, you have to have a certain mindset. You have to have a collective mindset. All of y'all have to have a, a, a shared mindset. It's just like in black communities where kids get killed all the time with straight bullets and people are okay with it and everybody's okay with it. Like you ask this person, ask that person, man, we need to get rid of the guns, man. Man, turn yourself in, man. This is damn shit. And no one's pro, no one's protesting. No one's rioting when the little girls and little boys get fucking shot with straight bullets. You, all of them are like that. All of these people have to be like this, or at least a great portion of them, in order to accomplish something like this. The firm, started by a Bangladeshi teacher 25 years ago with three students, now attracts more than 3,000 students a week. Think about this. You got 3,000 little fucking babies. Think about it. 3,000 of them in these fucking tutoring farm every fucking week coming through to fucking learn. That's a huge number, dude. For a small, for like, there, there's a lot of them, but goddamn. You can't get 3,000 black kids to fucking play basketball. Some schools are not 3,000 people. A lot of schools are not 3,000 people. A lot of them. Right now, we are... This year, more than 350 of its students made it to those elite schools. And the majority of them? They had 350 students get into the New York elite high schools. Mm. And those schools, the test to get into those schools is fucking hard, Jack. <laughs> I got fucking um, family in New York, as you know. Like um, Those elite schools are hard to get into. 
The only type of blacks that really get into those schools are fucking the, like African type immigrant at blacks. Them Yo, I, I, I bet I bet you um I bet you that these kids, if they bully, they'll bully you if you're not applying yourself. Can you imagine that? Oh yeah, definitely. That's what they that's that's how they are. Many it, of those elite schools and the majority of them are Bangladeshi immigrants. You know, we are filling in the gaps that the school system oftentimes misses, uh, particularly in minority neighborhoods, low-income neighborhoods, new immigrant neighborhoods. And I've been in schools that were heavily underfunded. The first hand, I was able to see the world of a difference of what kids in working-class neighborhoods are getting versus kids in um, slightly more established neighborhoods. Most instructors can speak Bangla. The year-end state exams at schools are taken very seriously, and the focus is on mastering maths and English skills from an early age. I found math really hard because I feel like I was really behind all the other students in math. So then at cons, they really pushed me to work on my weaknesses. While the city debates why its Black and Latino students are not making it onto the list, these newer immigrants, many of them with higher poverty rates, have been acing the tests year after year. Psych That's where the glider <laughs> got stabbed. Why, while they debate why black and brown students, and when we talk about New York, we're talking about sun burritos, we're not talking about Mexicans until now. In El Salvador, we're talking about sun burritos in New York, Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. While they debate why Blacks and some burritos in New York can't pass the test. These Bangladeshi with higher poverty rates are acing the test year after year. Acing it. And lower English literacy rates for their parents. <laughs> parents can't speak a lick of English. Parents don't even try to speak English. Parents had a kid speak to you. You try to talk to the parent to tell the tell the kid to speak to you. Yo, yo, I with these uh with this group excelling ac ac academically, are they at risk of losing their minority, their POC card? Well, look how brown they are, man. It's kind of hard for them because they're gonna play they, they they're very brown, man. So it's hard for them to, you know, it's not like they're like fucking Iranians where you could right. they basically like white people. But but look at know. the tigers, right? The tigers are sometimes they're not minorities, sometimes they are. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's... yeah, no doubt. I don't think tigers are. Man. I don't think tigers are. are the minority is not just your your numbers; it's also your fucking quality of life. Um, seven. Now remember, three hundred and fifty of those Bangladeshi kids got. Out of these 895 spots, 350 went to Bangladeshi kids. Seven went to black students. To get into selective high schools in New York. 350 from these motherfuckers and seven from the black community who've been here for fucking 500 years and shit. <laughs> Hey, I, Acadia, Acadia in the chat said that Gladys, quote, want to be left alone. I can't tell. Yeah, that, salute to Acadia, man. She said it's all POC and, 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 and LGBT versus Gladys civilization and Gladys <laughs> to a degree. But, um, yeah, man, um, to a degree. But, uh, yeah, man, um, salute I mean, to um, N. Moore, man. He says... Salute to you, Ock. You're the smartest on the panels. Hopefully, I'll get a chance to hope, hop on one of these days. Yeah, man. Everyone's welcome, man. You're all welcome, man. Even Juice Crew. Don't let Fisherman scare you, man. If you Juice Crew, you want to come up here, you can come up here, man. Yeah, man. Um, uh, uh, destroy the world. I was just thinking, you get so many, you get hundreds of viewers. I'm surprised more people don't try to hop on the, the panel. Yeah. I mean, you know, some people enjoy watching the show, man. It's, 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 you know, they just, you know, I mean, like everybody's not eloquently, you know, some people got to come up once and you got to feel good. You know, you got to, you got to bust your cherry. And you know what I'm saying? Once you, 
once you get up here and you you hear your voice and you um not nervous anymore, then you feel like you can come back again, man. But it's not easy, man. Um, salute to um, Brian Marsink, man. He says, later, all cool group, no hate, just good old-fashioned logic. But here's my thing. Um, they're debating, right, why the black kids can't do well. You got to mute yourself, Johnny. You got to, like, wash your clothes in the background. I don't know what you wash your clothes in. Always Johnny. <laughs> yeah, Johnny, man. Johnny, man. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. At cons, they really push me to work on my weaknesses. While the city debates why it's black and Latino students are not making it onto the list, these newer immigrants, many of them with higher poverty rates, have been acing the tests year after year. Sayyid Ali, who is writing a book on the subject, calls it the peer effect. I think it's really about within the schools themselves and seeing what are your peers doing. And so in the in highly segregated schools where the blacks and Latinos are, very few students even take the exam, let alone get into these schools. And so for them, this is not. Uh, yeah. And then, you know what that they're going to say? Well, they offering it to black students and yeah, man, black students would be if they won't. Nah, the test is available to black kids. They don't take it and they don't take it because they don't not good at shit like that they're not black kids are not good test takers they only would take a test that they have to this is a test that's offered would you like to take this test to get into the school ain't no fucking black kid taking no test they don't have to take you fucking kidding me they, they wasn't they wasn't always like that before though Cause you know I'm well, old. You enough. you're not you're not African American. You hate no no. But I remember the African American um culture. Even you go back to 1984, 85, where they before the crack and you know came into their neighborhood. I mean, because this part of Queens is exactly where I'm from. So I there's remember. No crack. There's no crack, Bobby. The community was fucked up before crack came. Crack did not ruin no fucking community, Bobby. Well, some of them were. Some of them actually, because I mean, I, I went to school because I used to be in competition when I went to uh, Flushing High School. I was in competition with a lot of Asians, uh, Indians, in regards to like who's who, who's gonna have the best uh, grades in mathematics, history. I was I was always like the history kings, and we had some few of African Americans that was uh, in in this competition too in those days. But it seems that as the time progressed their uh, societies just started crumbling more and more and more. Because if you think about it, if you go back, you look at the map of Queens, you look at Jamaica, Queens, Jamaica estates, these areas were were inhabited by middle-class African-Americans in the 1980s and, and late 70s. So they couldn't have gotten there by by any full government can have. have no, I got you. I got you. Queens was a black. Was a little, Queens was kind of like PG County is for right. PC. It's, yes, I, I definitely know Queens was not always just gotta gotta and i do know that crack had some effect on it but what i'm talking about is like yo heroin in the 70s like if you go back and watch documentaries from the 70s those black people were fucking living the exact same as they were in the 80s um but this is what he says right here is very interesting man and so in the in highly segregated schools where the blacks and latinos are very few students even take the exam, let alone get into these schools. And so for them, this is not, uh, I think it's, a, it's more of an abstraction for them. What also helps is the celebration of success and the healthy rivalry within the community. Samin Hussain, the son of a daily wage worker, got into the highly sought after Bronx High School of Did you Sac hear that? Did you hear that? Listen to that. Yes, she's a this son of a daily wage worker. Yes. Listen to this. I, I think it's a, it's more of an abstraction for them. What also helps is the celebration of success and the healthy rivalry within the community. Celebration of success and a healthy rivalry within the community. So the kids, like you said, Wicked, the kids have rivalries about making good grades and getting into good schools. As opposed to the celebration of getting off from the justice system or getting released from the justice system. Or acting white or being seen as acting white. That is or true. this is being seen as being a sellout or this scene is being a cornball 
well, well as, as, a, as, a, as a negative <laughs> you know what i'm saying these people don't they don't they don't see this as being a cornball or a lame they they actually want to compete to see who's going to get into the best school who's going to get the best grades and i'm telling you man their country is a fucking shithole so these people could not fucking create this in their own country so i'm not so so don't get me wrong these people could not create this on their own but if you put them into the system that gliders have made which is a turnkey society where you just come in and fucking just fly they're fucking excellent at that black folk okay. Their country is a caste system. They're not even allowed to succeed. Even if they are smart, they're not allowed to go past what their caste can do. Exactly. And and but what I'm saying is they they they're not gonna make this on their own. They're doing this within the framework of glider systems. In in in, in Bangladesh, uh, a guy his color, they call him Kalu. Which is the, the the black ones, which is like almost near equivalence to like an animal. So like the chances, Bali. yeah, a Khalid or Kalu, like the uh, the chances of a Kalu making it uh, in in that society. Then you add Islam and all these other crazy religions, uh, the chances of him making it in that society is almost impossible. But if you bring him to the United States, of course, it's a different story. Yep. So he's over here thriving, and he wouldn't be able to even fuck. He'd be shoveling shit over in his country. Samin Hussain, the son of a daily wage worker, got into the highly sought after Bronx High School of Science, but he still feels he could have done better. To be honest, I felt a little disappointed because it's not what I wanted, but eventually I, I got used to it because this is the school I'm going to attend. And once I went to their Look at all the house, fucking kids. This is the open house. This is the, look at all the kids. They're fucking all Bengali. Ain't no fucking moon crickets here. I saw all the opportunities and all the courses and classes I could take, and I feel very excited to go there. These schools offer not just an education, but also opportunity. They have stellar academic records. They are free to attend, and for many in the immigrant communities, they provide a way out of poverty. For each of them, it's a chance to chase an American dream. Rajesh Upadhyay, BBC News, New York. Now he studied along. Think about that, man. Those people did not fucking come over here and say, well, everything's not perfect. We're going to march and protest and we're going to beg for programs. They literally made the fucking program. They made the program. <laughs> And plus, they don't, you know, these kids, they don't they don't go into your local YMCA's and all these uh, after-school programs because they're in fear of their lives. If they go, they'll get beat up. So, <laughs> that's, that's true. so that's I, true. I don't know if I've told this story before, but I'm an engineer. And I worked with this uh, other engineer who was uh, who was uh, Indian by birth. And he, was, he came here when he was three. But he has the, the 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 most East Texas accent you've ever heard. Mm -hmm. But we were we we were at at a uh, Brookshire's uh, for deli for for lunch, and we had this liberal white woman come up and said, "Well, we have so many opportunities for you. We we can we we can get you scholarships to this college up here in in, in Massachusetts and all this kind of stuff." I'm like, uh. I'm sitting there laughing by I laugh, I'm sitting there laughing my ass off. He's, he's there trying to be polite. He's like, lady, he's already got a degree. He's an engineer. He works for an aerospace company. I mean, good God. <laughs> she thought because he was a POC that he needed a handout or something. Uh-huh. Those people don't need they they thrive in white cultures, man. White people have set it up to where it's just easy. All you have to do is come in here. Watch the, these migrants. Watch how they thrive. They're not going to thrive as be, like become aerospace technologists and all that stuff, but they're going to be home improvement. They're going to thrive in their way. They're going to fucking concrete company, lay, um, carpentry, fucking you know, drywall. They're going to fucking start businesses like that 
in their lane and dominate and shit. Watch. So crazy, man. Um, wow. And make great money at it too. Hell of money. It's just, it's just um so fucking amazing, man. How how Gladys have set this society up where it's literally like just go. Once you get here, go. It's that simple. Son, man, we can't do it. Not because of no other reason that we just can't do it, man. 